Hey guys, Back Photography here, and today we are looking at a real world review of my Sigma 50mm f1.4 art lens. So if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and press that notification bell so that you can keep up to date with all of my latest videos coming out in the future. So in this video, we're going to be looking at my Sigma 50mm 1.4. We're going to be looking at a photo shoot I did with this lens, and we're going to have a look really in depth at the photos that this lens produces. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the raw files from this photo shoot so that you can have a look in detail in Photoshop or Lightroom yourself, or have a little bit of a poke around in your spare time. I'm also going to leave in the description a link to the Sigma 50mm 1.4 art lens if you're interested in checking it out there as well, along with all the other equipment I used on this photo shoot. So for those of you with a really keen eye, you might see that I'm using some other lenses in this photo shoot, but all the raw files that I'm going to leave in the description and all the photos I'm going to be talking about in this video will have been shot with the 50mm. So a 50mm lens is a normal focal length on a full frame camera, so not too wide and not too narrow, and it's really great for a whole bunch of different types of photography. You can do portraits, landscapes, street photography, music photography, weddings, pretty much it does it all. And the 50mm 1.4 is a fantastic lens because it is beautifully sharp and has a really low maximum aperture of f1.4, which means you can get beautifully out of focus backgrounds and really great images in low light. It's currently listed on Amazon for about 950 US dollars, link in the description by the way, and although that is quite expensive for a 50mm lens, we'll see in a minute just how sharp and amazing this lens really is. So now let's have a look at some of the images I took on this photo shoot with this lens, and remember that there will be a link in the description to all the raw files if you want to have a look in more detail in your own time. So in all of these photos, I decided to shoot wide open at f1.4, and the reason I did that is so that I could show you how this lens performs at the most extreme end of its capabilities. Because lenses tend to perform their poorest when they are shot either completely wide open or completely closed. And as we'll see when we go into Photoshop and I really zoom in on this image, despite shooting wide open in the lens's most extreme capabilities, we still see fantastically sharp images. So now let's jump into Photoshop and have a look at one image in particular and have a look at how it performed when we zoom really far into this image. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and this is the photo that we're going to be looking at today. And as you can see, the photo is looking very nice and sharp. We shot this at f1.4, so that is obviously the lowest aperture that this lens is able to produce. And as you can see here, it is very sharp indeed. It's not perfectly sharp, but it is very, very, very sharp. And when we zoom right into the eyes, which is where I focused on this image, we can see that both eyes, even at f1.4, are very sharp indeed. Now, if we zoom in right to the pixel level where you can see each individual pixel, you can still see that this lens is looking very, very sharp indeed at f1.4. So that is a very, very good result by the Sigma 50mm, particularly when we're shooting wide open and you can see that the background is incredibly blurry because of the low aperture that we shot at here. So we can notice that the contrast levels are actually quite low at 1.4, which is a little bit of a disappointment, something we definitely can fix in post. And you can see here the eyelashes are looking quite gray. The eyes aren't looking very um, bold. The contrast levels are really quite low um, shooting at f1.4, but that is definitely something we can fix in post just by adding a little bit of contrast. Now, if we look at the corners, obviously I can't show you how sharp the image is in the corner because we were shooting at such a low aperture, but we can see some very prominent green fringing in this light just here and that's a little bit of a disappointment but kind of something that you would expect to see when shooting at such a low aperture and again something that we can definitely quite easily fix in post-production so I think that shooting wide open on this particular lens very very good result by the 50 mil so one final thing to talk about with this lens is the autofocus and from my results I found that the autofocus was very accurate indeed it was very fast as well I probably missed approximately one in every six or seven photos shooting wide open so that's a fantastic result in my personal opinion especially since this lens was adapted to my Sony a7r2 now when I shot with this lens on my Canon 5D Mark IV, I found an even better result where this lens was essentially 
catching focus perfectly every single time. So absolutely fantastic autofocus results. Definitely one of the best autofocusing lenses I've ever used. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the sharpness and performance of this camera lens. If you have used this lens before, let me know in the comments what your real world opinions are of it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. I'll be making a lot more like this in the future. And once again, thank you very much for watching.